Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Peter. Oh, Peter. Peter Pan. Hey guys, so welcome to a really exciting vlog. I'm going to be reading for the first time Peter Pan. I've always been really captivated by the story of Peter Pan. Uh, I thought it'd be really fun for the first time to vlog my experience reading it with my thoughts and then to go on and read retellings. Now I've chosen a bunch of retellings. The Wendy, Lost Boy by Christina Henry, The Neverland Wars, Peter and the Starcatchers, Everland, Unhook by Lisa Maxwell, The Child Thief. I'm predicting these to be my favorite. Hey guys, editing Nicole here. I realized that in my introduction to this video, I didn't say that when I originally came up with the concept of this idea, I did do a YouTube search to see if someone else had done this before and I couldn't find anything. I had found heaps of videos of people recommending books on retellings, but I haven't seen anyone done a vlog where they read Peter Pan for the first time and then they read the retellings and give recommendations. So if there is a video out there where someone has done that, please let me know and I'll make sure to give them credit and link them in the description and all that. I did just want to add that the structure of this video is inspired by Kayla from Books and Lala who I just adore. I wanted to give a little bit of credit to her for being just a huge inspiration. I was anticipating that I would adore the story of Peter Pan just like I adored the Disney movies as a child. However, this story wasn't what I expected or maybe it wasn't what I remembered. There were a lot of problematic elements of the story and that must have gone over my head as a child. Peter Pan was published in the early 1900s and so it is a product of its time with very strong themes of sexism and use of racist terms. I, I really didn't like how it talked about women and women's roles and how it very strongly implied that a woman's role is to be a mother and nothing else that that's what she is to grow up and be. I completely forgot, I know it's in the Disney movie, I remembered while I was reading it, that Wendy, when she is taken to the island, is there mostly as a role of mother for the Lost Boys and then when she goes back to London she does grow up and become a mother and she has a daughter and in the book Wendy makes a deal with Peter Pan when she returns from Neverland that she will visit him once a year to do his spring cleaning and be a mother to him for a day and that goes on for a while until Wendy grows up she has her own daughter and then her daughter ends up taking that role of doing the spring cleaning and then that daughter's daughter takes the role. And it was just so sad. I really didn't like that because I was just implying that that's all women are going to be. So limiting and I just really didn't like that. Also just didn't enjoy the story. I found it really difficult to read. Not difficult to read, but I wasn't drawn to reading it. I didn't feel any connection to the characters. In fact, I found each of them very annoying. I really didn't like how there was a lot of girl hate. Uh, there was go hate between Wendy and Tinkerbell, Wendy and the mermaids, Wendy and Tiger Lily, and it was all because they were infatuated with Peter and wanted his attention, so they just hated on one another because their competition. It was just a very unpleasant read, unfortunately, which I was not expecting at all. I was really expecting to like this. When I first finished this, I gave it one star. I was pretty infuriated by all the messages that this book stood for, but Upon reflection, I'm going to give this book two stars, not one star. I do think it's a very influential piece of literature and unfortunately it's a product of its time so it has quite a few errors, but it was an interesting read. I think that's about all I have to say on it. two of the retellings. The first one I started was the middle grade, so Peter and the Star Catches, 230 pages in, so I'm just over halfway. So I've got that much left. I think the start was quite slow, like I wanted the plot 
to start a lot sooner. We're really getting into the meat of things right now and I'm really enjoying it. This book follows a young orphan boy named Peter and with him and these fellow orphans they are taken to this ship and the ship is called the Neverland. They are going to be sold off to this king who has this reputation to feed his servants to his snake. Also one of the other orphan boys that is in Peter's company is called James. So I'm wondering if he is going to grow up and be James Hook because this is definitely an origin story which is what I'm really enjoying about it. This pirate known as Captain Stash which is short for Captain Mustache. His chapters are kind of ridiculous like in a funny way and his character is ridiculous. I mean just his name you can tell that. He is after something and yeah it all kind of gets entangled. I really like how much of the story is about pirates and they're gross like they're disgusting that's what pirates are meant to be this is already more of what i expected peter pan the like original peter pan to be it's not whimsical but it's definitely got that magical and adventurous vibe to it I really like peter as a character and the other protagonist molly she's really interesting and i really like learning about what she's up to because she is kind of part of a secret society that you learn pretty quickly and i really like that reveal i hope it's one of the middle grade series where with each book the characters age up. I mean I guess Peter won't age up but I think it'll be really cool to see the other characters age up and if Peter doesn't and why. I don't know if that's going to happen but that's just something I would like to see happen. It's sitting at a high three stars hopefully it'll get even better towards the end and I'm excited to see where this goes. <laughs> The book I started was The Wendy, currently on page 51. My initial thoughts with this is how this is really about gender roles, which I didn't really associate with Peter Pan until I read it recently. The protagonist Wendy in this one has had long-time dreams to join the Navy and eventually become a captain. And so that's what we're seeing her trying to do at the start. She's just joined the Navy and we have met Michael and John, who if you don't know are her brothers in the original Peter Pan. In here they are her crewmates and there was kind of this weird moment where I think it was John tried to flirt with her and I was like why would you do that like in a retelling like it's like brother in the original book anyway the chapter I just finished we met Peter and I'm confused about what exactly Peter is in this one he's like a mix of a vampire and a fairy there is magic in this which makes me excited I will say the writing isn't anything spectacular it's quite straightforward I'm liking it but nothing's impressed me yet but I do like like I said that it is challenging the gender roles and the stereotypes that were very evident in the original Peter Pan. So I've finished both books. Do you want the good news or the bad news first? We'll go with the bad news. I didn't like the Wendy. I think the one thing that just kind of made me lose interest in this book was every single male character was a potential love interest. And it was just like, this is the whole story and there were like no other female characters but you're trying to challenge gender roles like that's what it kind of seemed like this book was going to do but this story felt very disjointed i just didn't know how the plot moved from point a to point b even the characters motivations behind their actions and their choices of what they were doing i just didn't fully understand because i feel like we didn't get a full explanation peter was so vague in this like that's the only way i can describe him he popped in every now and then and apparently had chemistry with Wendy. There wasn't really that much magic. I was expecting there to be a lot more magic, but Peter was the magic in this. I still am confused by what kind of creature he is. It said at one point he had wings and feathers and all I could picture was how from how the smoking castle. Okay, like there were elements I liked, but then there was just a lot of stuff that didn't, I couldn't connect the dots because I feel like I wasn't given all the dots. So I think I'm gonna give us two stars. But in lighting news, I really, really did enjoy Peter and the Star Catchers. One thing I will say is I wish that a little bit more from the protagonist Molly. We are kind of alternating chapters between Peter and then the pirate and I kind of wish we had Molly's POV because I think it would have been really nice to add her story into the mix. It's a really fun light-hearted middle grade story and this is also the first book in the series but what I'm really interested is to see how it continues on because this could potentially have been a standalone we get all wrapped up we find out a lot of the origins of Peter Pan which I really enjoyed. Okay so I decided that Everland was going to be the next book I picked up and I'm currently on page 61. I have no really strong feelings towards this at the moment. Following this girl called Gwen, she is hiding and looking after her two younger siblings. London is now known as as Evelyn and it's been invaded. The invaders are a group known as the Marauders and the leader of the Marauders is Captain Hook. I wasn't expecting going into this but we get Gwen's POV and we also get Captain Hook's POV. I'm a little bit confused about what time period this is set in and sometimes the context seems like it's 
in an older setting but the language makes it seem modern and some of the technology that's been hinted at makes it seem modern so i'm a little bit confused on that front okay so i wanted to update you on everland first because i did end up finishing this and i didn't like this i had just multiple issues with it not issues it wasn't problematic or anything like that i just think it was a very underdeveloped story having finished this book i still couldn't really picture the setting like was this a dystopian setting set in the future was this world war ii time period i was confused second thing is hook was such an I mean, all the characters were pretty underdeveloped, but especially Hook, he was such a 2D villain. It was also one of those things where things just happen way too easily and way too conveniently to the point that I was rolling my eyes. I'm going to keep this vague because it could be considered mild spoilers, but there was this point in the story where they had to go to the villain's location and they basically just walked through the back door and I'm like, how? You're supposed to be in this worn torn country that is still overrun by these guards known as the marauders but you can still just like walk through the back door of your villain's palace i'm not sure what i'm gonna give this maybe 1.5 stars i ended up starting the child thief so i'm just over 100 pages in the first 50 pages is part of part one and in that we are introduced to kind of the situation and that is peter he has this job of where he goes out into the world and he tries to find children that have been abandoned or run away from home or they might be drug users or children who have been abused children who kind of want an out so he goes and finds these children and he takes them back to this island known as avalon and the boy we meet in part one is called nick and this is the new boy that peter has chosen to take back to Avalon so we are introduced to Nick and kind of his unfortunate situation in life and a part one ends when they get to the island and this island is alive like there are monsters there's like this mist and everything's out there to kill you I've just started part two and it seems like we're alternating chapters between Nick's POV where we're finding out what's happening on the island with him what's happened to previous children and how things work and we're also getting Peter's POV and we're looking back on Peter's past and his origin story I really, really enjoyed this so much so far. I love the art. I love the vibe. The writing, I really like it. It's really easy to read, but it's still detailed. I love the dark, gothic, fairy tale atmosphere of it all. I will say the one thing I've kind of rolled my eyes out a bit is every single female character we've come across so far in this has been sexualized. So just be cautious of that. And it does start off the first, like literally the first scene in this book is a rape scene. So huge trigger warnings it's very dark it's this and i think the reason why this is working so much better than evelyn and the wendy retellings worked was because this feels like its own story it's still got peter it still has this magical island like neverland so there's still like heavy influences of peter pan that make it very obvious that it's a retelling but what brom has also done is he's created his own protagonist of nick so we're getting introduced to nick's story and his situation and then he's also made peter his own character because the way Peter is in this book and the way like his personality and the things he's doing is so different to the original Peter thing where he's quite I would say more cheeky whereas this Peter is basically a psychopath that's what I'm getting from this with Avalan it was very evident that and even the Wendy that the author was just trying to rewrite the same characters in different settings and there was never a sense that this story was their own really i mean it is their own i don't want to say that it's plagiarized please don't get me wrong but it, there wasn't enough that made it their own that made it a different story that made it stood out the way hook was written in this right as soon as hook's introduced we knew he's the villain we didn't need telling of that we didn't need convincing of that so it was like the author didn't write anything to make us convinced that he's a villain or that he has motives that you know made him a villain or whatever because we know that from the previous text or from the origin text so i think that's why this is working so well this is a lot more creation in this i think a lot more of the author's own input i might have to come back with my thoughts on this but hopefully you're getting for a sense what i'm trying to say i finished it it was a 4.5 star read for me i was saying one thing i was worried about if the author was going to continue to sexualize women and if it was going to get worse and thankfully that wasn't the case there's just a lot of sexualizing in the first part like in part one it happens again but it never escalates and it's not as frequent 
so I was really happy that that didn't happen because I was like oh that's gonna ruin the book for me if it does so when Peter does steal the children they become part of like the lost boys but instead of the lost boys in this they're called devils they're called Peter's devils and I really like that it was made up of females and males because obviously in the original Peter Pan it's just the lost boys the island in this was almost its own character it became a huge part of the story and the other thing I actually wanted to just add lastly I was reading the author's note at the end and he was talking about how the inspiration behind this and how he was reading the original Peter Pan well, not the children's version but the original original and he said that it actually hinted at quite a bit of dark points so I kind of wish that I had actually read the original original Peter Pan rather than the children's version because I think that would have been really interesting but then he was saying he went back and he looked at the mythologies that inspired Jane Barry's Peter Pan and he looked at more mythologies and that's what he used for this. I think if you're someone who's into mythologies this will be a really fun book to read because a lot of the creatures in this actually are based on folklore and mythology. I don't think I have anything else to say so it was actually kind of sad. I wasn't really expecting that but I really loved it and I'm definitely interested to pick up more books by Brom. Whoops. <laughs> I started Unhook by Lisa Maxwell. Happy to report that I'm 70 pages in and I'm already liking this. So Gwen has just moved to London with her mum. Her mum has this history of impulsively moving. Her mum has always told her that they run away because they're being chased by someone or monsters. You're not really sure. There's a bit of a mystery. When she was a kid, she believed her mum, but as she got older, she came to terms with like her mum kind of being, I guess you'd say she believes her mum's delusional. But of course it turns out her mom's not delusional. She has now just been taken. She was taken by these monsters. We don't know too much about them where I'm at, but she was lost in the kidnapping, I guess you'd say. And she ended up falling into the sea and being taken onto this ship, which has a crew of all these young boys. Some of them are her age and then a lot of them are a lot younger. And it is Captain Hawk that this is a retelling of because I thought that when I initially picked this up but then when I think I was reading the synopsis I thought it was just like Peter Pan. I'm not actually not sure if it's going to be like the Captain Hawk in this is strictly Captain Hawk or if Lisa Maxwell has combined Hawk's character and Peter Pan's character and made her character in this. Uh, it's very obvious that there is going to be romance between Gwen and Hawk. I really like Lisa Maxwell's storytelling like I said I've read a book by her before. I deleted the clip of me talking about Lisa Maxwell's other book so I just wanted to quickly add here that the other book of hers I've read is The Last Magician and I thought I would add it since it's a very popular book on booktube. So I finished Unhooked and oh my goodness I loved this so so much. It had just so many elements of Peter Pan that I wanted to see in a retelling of Peter Pan. It had adventure, it had magic, it had a little bit of romance, it had a darker undertone to it and I really liked that we got to see a different side of the characters that we'd already known. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to rate this. It's either going to be like a 4 or a 4.25. As much as I loved this, it wasn't a perfect book. There were a couple of issues. The main issue I had was the main character's friend, Olivia. She was a very underdeveloped character and she was used as a plot device, which wasn't great. And it was disappointing because when you're first introduced to her, you're very aware of Olivia and Gwen's friendship is quite strong. And I thought it was going to be really lovely to see that all the way through and we didn't get that. The other thing is it's kind of instant lovey. Like it's not strictly instant lovey, but it's definitely a fast developing romance. But this is a standalone, so it wasn't like there was a whole lot of time to develop romance but their feelings just grew very intensely very quickly you know what i wasn't mad about it. i'm not gonna lie i wasn't mad about it i really enjoyed it if you are a fan of once upon a time and in particular if you are a fan of captain swan i highly recommend this because yeah the romance in this really reminded me of captain swan so i'm so happy i read this i wouldn't have read this without doing this video so i'm just so happy that i did and i got to discover a new fave i did start the neverland wars I'm about halfway. I'm not loving this. I'm actually really struggling to pick this up, I'm not gonna lie. We are following Gwen. She lives in a world very much like ours and then she comes home from school one day and her sister's gone missing and it turns out that Peter Pan has taken her. Her parents are aware that Peter Pan is real in the world and her parents are aware that magic is real but Gwen and all the other children are kind of like kept from that knowledge. And then the next night, Peter Pan comes and takes her and now they're in Neverland. Her goal to go to Neverland was to convince her sister to come home. Yeah, it's just so boring. Okay, so I finished the Neverland Wars and I really didn't like this one. This is my least favorite, hopefully, of the entire video. 
I didn't like the writing. I just didn't like the way that the author used her words. I just, it was weird and then it would take me out of the story. And that made the story feel very young, like in middle grade, but it felt like it was written for like a 13, 14 year old, but then it's kind of not really appropriate for a 13, 14 year old because there are times where I was talking about drugs and parties. I got to the end of the book and I'm like, what was even the point? Because nothing happened. Yeah, so I have nothing else to say. I'm gonna leave it at that because I'm feeling a bit bitter and <laughs> I don't want to say anything else that's not very nice, so goodbye. We're done. Okay, I have read 100 pages of Lost Boy. This is a Captain Hook retelling, which I feel like I should have picked up on because look at this cover. There's very clearly a hook. Christina Henry's hook in this is called Jamie, and he is part of the Lost Boys. So we're just kind of learning at the moment the dynamics of the Lost Boys and Peter Pan and how, you know, Peter Pan steals these children, why he kind of steals these children, and how he has control over them. So it seems like the children that Peter steals, most of them grow up really, really slowly. Some of them don't grow up at all. It's interesting because I think what's going to happen with this is it's going to show how Peter is really the villain. I completed Lost Boy. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I wasn't enjoying most of the first half of this which is and i didn't want to say that when i did my update before like i just didn't want to come back to you with another disappointing book but i did end up enjoying it i think because this was a much more character focused story than i think i wanted out of a peter pan retelling that it took me a while to get invested and interested and to really appreciate it this story is how peter is a villain and hook isn't and it's all about Peter's control and manipulation over the Lost Boy. What I really liked about Peter in this and the way he was done as a villain was he was such a child. The way he was behaving, there was a quote in here about childhood being selfish and free and I just thought that was such a good description of Peter. I just, I really liked how Christina Henry interpreted it. There's a really interesting character study in the end, but yeah, like I said, it just, it took me a while to wrap my head around the story and to get fully invested. It was also interesting because we didn't really get to know much about the origins of Peter, like how he actually came to be to Neverland and stuff. It was really focused on Captain Hook's character and the Lost Boys and Peter's control and over them, which was like a lot of these other books that I've read, they really did look at Peter's origins. So Jamie in here, Captain Hook, he was the first boy that Peter took and he was Peter's favourite. Jamie really cared for the other boys and he really disliked how Peter treated them and he would always care for them. That was where the conflict between the two characters came to be and a lot of it came from Peter's jealousy and just like really childish emotions. Absolutely hated Peter in this. Oh, really well crafted villain in this. A lot of the time if Peter Pan is a villain he's really romanticised whereas in this case he wasn't which was good. I just appreciated that different take on it. Now I'm going to wrap up all the books I've read. So I'll tell you my favourite book that I read for this video to my least favourite. So yeah obviously first I read Peter Pan. My favourite book out of the retellings I think is The Child Thief. I just loved this story. I loved this take. I loved the incorporation of the art. There are black and white sketches at the beginning of every chapter and then there is a set of coloured sketches in the centre. Next favourite, which honestly came as a surprise for me, but it is Unhooked by Lisa Maxwell. It was a 4.25 star read for me. I just had so much fun reading this. Actually, interesting fact, both of these, Neverland Island, was a huge part of the story in both of these and they both had a quite dark undertone to the story. So there's obviously similarities to what I liked. And I'd also say these two were quite adventurous and they still had like the magic and mythology in them, which obviously you know, it's my taste. So I think that's why I really enjoyed both of these a lot. Oh, I'm tossing up between these two. I think Lost Boy is going to be my next favourite. I think enjoyment wise, I enjoyed Peter and the Starcatchers more, but I think Lost Boy is going to stick with me longer. Then there's the Wendy. I gave this book book two stars. Then we have Everland, which I think I gave 1.75 stars. And then Neverland. I just was so bored reading this. So these are all the books I read. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had so much fun doing this. This video has actually been in my head for an entire year, this video idea, and it's taken this long to do, mostly because I wanted to get more confident in front of the camera and I wanted to improve on my editing skills before I did this. This year I'm really determined to make my channel more creative and have my own kind of niche because I've definitely been a typical booktuber up until now, which is fine, but I'm ready to put more creative content out there. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I do plan to do future videos where I read more retellings. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do Alice in Wonderland next. So spoiler alert. Just let me know your thoughts on this video and on these books. I hope that you are well. I hope that you are enjoying whatever you're currently reading and I hope to see you next time. Bye.